All right, the mailbag for May. Let's get into it. Now, before we get into the mail, I'd like to know, are you getting notifications for this channel? I can have 38,000 subscribers, but if no one's getting notified to watch the videos, then subscriber count doesn't really matter as much anymore. So let me know in the comments if you're getting notifications or not. Of course, if you're not, you're probably not watching this video, but I'd still like to hear everyone's thoughts and whether or not they've clicked the bell icon to get notifications. Let me know below. Okay? Hello, Freighter. I was recently watching the Kanye West interview with TMZ. And in it, he mentioned that for black people, remembering slavery 400 years ago was a choice. I resonated with this, and it reminded me of when I first started watching your channel and learning the power of letting things go, thereby becoming more powerful. Sometimes I feel like Kanye. When I try to tell my family, with the exception of my mother, of course, and friends, to let go of the past transgressions that other people, who happen to be white, have done to our ancestors. I'm black, and so is my family. And move on to forgiveness and acceptance so we can become better. I'm constantly shot down and told I'm crazy, or don't know what I'm talking about. At this point, I have taken the do not cast pearls before swine mentality, because I figured might as well try and just observe and not make enemies this early in my life. Not that I feel that I am better than anyone, I just don't want to see people drown their lives in resentment. It does get lonely sometimes to be told I'm crazy, but I always learn to forgive the ones that call me crazy too. Anyway, I just wanted to share that and maybe get your thoughts on the interview if you've seen it. As always, thank you so much and take care. You're welcome, and no, I have not seen the interview. I don't watch much TMZ, and to be honest, celebrity gossip is the thing I pay the least amount of attention to. And so I will just take your word for that's what he said. In which case, I would agree with that. Although I wouldn't say that remembering slavery is so much of a choice as dwelling on it. And if you're dwelling on it, you're not letting it go. And of course, this would be in varying degrees from... Not so much at all to filtering everything through that lens and developing a victim mentality. But look, you got to understand that for many people, it's simply easier to have a victim mentality than to work hard and make something of yourselves because in this way, they feel justified of not making anything of themselves, that it's not their fault that their life turned out the way that it did. It's society's fault. It's always put on someone else. Remember, the one who says he can and the one who says he can't are both right. And Kanye, no matter what anyone thinks of him, because I know that he is a highly polarizing figure, is one of the ones who said that he can. And he made it happen. Unfortunately, the victim mentality is widespread. It's an epidemic, not only through the black community, but throughout society as a whole. And for the ones who are always bringing up slavery as a reason for their failings, it's just become a scapegoat at this point. And as a result, ironically, slavery is still enslaving these people. It's still doing them harm. But this is a choice. Kanye is absolutely correct about that. Now, long ago in my early videos, I went over how you can't save everyone. Least of all, by telling them anything. People will naturally resist what you have to say to them to try to change their minds. Instead, you have to be the change that you desire to see in the world. You have to lead by example. And that's really all you can do. And I talked about this early on because it is a natural tendency to want to go and share with other people. But more times than not, it ends up proving to be a complete waste of time and energy and can also do you harm if you're not completely detached from what others think of you. It's good that you're taking a do not cast pearls before swine mentality. People telling you that you're crazy and that you don't know what you're talking about is not encouragement. And therefore, you should absolutely separate yourself from that as much as you can. 
as much as people have a tendency to want to share and talk about these things with others, it is advisable not to do so, especially in the beginning, like people starting out in magic, not only for the reasons that we just went over, but also because it could be a source of validation that prevents you from taking action. You bounce your ideas off of other people that you know, and surprise, surprise, they don't go against the norm. They don't say, yes, I think you should do occult magic. That sounds great. They don't say, you know, you're right. We should forgive all white people for the sins of their ancestors. And so the ideas are shot down and they're never acted upon. Also, we talked about how everything's an input and an output system. What goes in has to come out. And when we go and try to convince other people of our perspective, that is letting it out. And we no longer have the drive to actually do. I find that in many ways, talking is just another way of not doing. You've just let out all your fuel through your mouth. Now, if you get into a habit of doing first, well, now you can talk about it all you want, provided it's not going to cause you a lot of grief. And if you think the grief is bad now, wait until you start pulling away. Wait till you start rising up like Kanye did and start doing better than your fellow man, being one of the ones who say they can. Bob Proctor's talked about this quite a few times. The people that you thought were your friends will do everything they can to pull you back down to their level, to keep you down where they are. If you thought they didn't like your ideas, they really don't like your ideas when they work. You know, they say it's lonely at the top for a reason, and it's not because the people at the top are a-holes, as it's widely believed they are. It's quite the opposite. The only ones that you can help by talking are the ones who are seeking help. And no one's going to seek help from you if you haven't helped yourself first by proving to them there's a better way, by demonstrating there's a better way. And this is why I believe that it's absolutely critical for everyone to focus on changing and bettering themselves first, for it's only through helping yourself first that you're really able to help others. So my advice is to not let the naysayers get you down. You're doing the right thing by not casting pearls before swine and just remaining silent and observant. Now what goes in still has to come out. And if you're not getting it out by sharing with others, then you're going to have to find some other way. And I always recommend getting it out in your magical practice itself. I'd like to thank you for your question and for your continued support on Patreon. It means a lot to me, and I wish you all the best. Now we head back to YouTube, where I got a lot of comments on the latest video released there, which was the Afterlife video, where more than a couple people told me that I need to do more research. On what? Death? Would you like to volunteer for my research study? (laughs) Now, I did say there was going to be a part two. That should show that it's not meant to be the most comprehensive guide on the afterlife, that we're just merely exploring the topic. I also said that those who claim to know otherwise, what happens to us after we pass on, are either full of it, or they are lying to you. Now, I don't know for certain, but it could be that the ones telling me that I need to do more research could be the same ones selling you a lot of bull on the afterlife. It could very well stand the reason the religions aren't the only ones who profit from the prospect of an afterlife. Many in the metaphysical, occult, new age groups do as well. Just saying. And there's nothing that they can claim, no shred of evidence that they can produce, no theory that they can propose that I cannot create a reasonable doubt argument for. And that's coming from somebody who works with entities and spirits. But that doesn't mean that we live on after we pass. Part of being depolarized is being able to see and argue both sides. So there's not anything that someone can claim that I won't be able to see the other side of it and find that reasonable doubt. You know, I have viewed death up close and personal. I've had the out-of-body experience. Many of my best friends growing up have been dead for a long time. I've had more animals die in my arms than I'd care to admit. And yet nothing has convinced me 100% that anything conscious of ourselves 
moves on after death. If anything does live on, I believe it's going to be more subconscious in nature. I do appreciate all those who commented and were watching the video regardless. Now, moving on. This is relatively new. It may not be by the time it reaches YouTube, but for now it is. And I've already been asked by a few people, oh my God, have you seen the video? Grand Infinity has quit YouTube. Yeah, I've seen it. I've watched the video. What do I think about it? It is what it is. I don't know what's going on with his circumstances, so I don't know his motivations. I know that when I was up around 20,000 subscribers or so where he's at, I felt like quitting too. I started getting attacked on the regular, but I don't know if he's going through any of that. All I can do is go by what he's saying. And for those who haven't seen the video, I will leave a link to it. At first he says things are changing, things have changed, things must change. Yeah, the only thing that's constant is that things are constantly changing. He goes on to say that he started his channel to help people, but then he realizes that people can't be saved. They have to want to be saved and they'll find a way themselves. This goes back to the very first message that we did in this video, the one from Patreon, and going back to some of my earliest videos, that you can only save yourself and then be the change that you want to see in the world. You have to be the example. I said early on that I wasn't out to save anybody, that those who were meant to find my channel will find it. And they have, and it's helped a lot of people. Sorry, my neighbor was mowing the grass, so I had it rain on him. <laughs> and now it is quiet once more, so that I may finish recording. As I was saying, I know that my channel has helped a great many people. And I'm certain that Joe March's channel has as well. I mean, he's absolutely correct that we can't save anybody. They have to want that for themselves and do the work themselves. But to say that his channel has helped only him and not anyone else, I can't say that I really agree with that. Sure, synchronicity plays a part in it, but there also needs to be something out there for people to find when they seek. I see that he's taken all of his videos down. Um, I'm hoping he didn't delete them. I hope that he just set them to private so that they can be restored at a future date. You know, that's a lot of work to be taking down. He then goes on to talk about how he needs to let go of the channel because it's become too attached to his ego. Now that to me is a more valid reason, because these things can. It's why I don't like people to praise me. I don't want to be put up on a pedestal. If you must show your gratitude, simply saying thanks is enough. But on the flip side, I've always wanted my work to outlast me that it would still prove to be a useful source of information long after I'm gone, that it was a worthwhile endeavor. I wouldn't necessarily call that ego. It's simply wanting the great work to be great work. It's not about me, it's about the work. That's when Joe March says, it's not about me, it's not about you. Right. But I can see how it can get that way. And if that's the case, perhaps stepping back for a while would do a bit of good. Moving on to something else for a while. I don't know what his plans are, but I do wish him all the best, and I'm hopeful that he may return sometime, or at least reinstate his older videos. He's always free to contact me if he needs anything. I kind of wish he did when I heard that he was having problems with entities. I may have been able to help with that, so I want him to know that he can call on me if he needs to. Now, at the end of the video, he says that he is nothing, we are nothing. And it reminded me of Jack and Hagar from Game of Thrones. A man is no one. I think that all magicians at some point go through a phase of nihilism. Hell, maybe everyone does. Back in the 70s, they were singing, all we are is dust in the wind. But it is very easy for magicians to become nihilistic after being depolarized for some time. Just understand that that perspective is but one of many. You can explore it, but don't allow yourself to become imprisoned by it. Saying we are nothing is no more valid than saying we are everything, for every truth is but a half truth. Hopefully it's just a phase in his development that he's going through. I've gone through it, many others have as well. But whatever he decides, 
We wish him the best. And that will about do it for today. So leave a like and share this video if you enjoyed it. Remember to follow me on Twitter, at Freighter Xavier. I just recently gave some seven planetary powers and secrets of wealth programs away over there. What's coming next? We shall see. And consider supporting the channel on Patreon, where every pledge, no matter how small, gets early access to Mystery School videos before they're available on YouTube. I want to thank everyone for tuning in, and I'll see you soon. Take care.